all-star guard Deontay Murray might be made available by the Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks wanted to add Murray last offseason. If he is made available again by the Atlanta Hawks, the Knicks might call and see what it would take to make a trade happen to get Deontay Murray. All of that and more today. Let's get started. The Hawks might trade Deontay Murray. According to Bleacher Report's Eric Pincus, Murray might be moved for the right price under the new collective bargaining agreement for luxury tax teams. In the article, Pincus notes the following. The Hawks are facing a more immediate problem under the new CBA, with the payroll projected to be $172 million and $16.4 million in luxury taxes, more if players hit various incentives. The team is believed to be looking for a home for John Collins, but some whispers abound that Deontay Murray could be moved in the right deal. Eric Pincus also reported Murray is due $18.2 million this season, but may not be open to an extension limited to a $25.4 million starting salary. Unless Atlanta can shed significant salary elsewhere, they may not be able to afford Murray at his current price, let alone on a new deal in his likely asking range above $30 million. Now, this is massive news for the Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks added Murray to pair with Trey Young to be one of the best duos, one of the best tandems, one of the best backcourts in the league. Unfortunately, that did not pan out the way the Atlanta Hawks thought. The Hawks were supposed to be a competitive playoff team. Now, while they did make it to the playoffs by winning the play-in, and while they didn't make a competitive series against Boston, I'm sure a lot of fans in Atlanta would tell you the Hawks season did not go exactly as planned. The addition of Deontay Murray was supposed to change that team for the better, unlock more of its capabilities, do things that they couldn't do last year. You can make the argument that the Hawks look more hungry, they played more together, and they had more players on the team that knew their role. And I think some of the times the problem with Trey Young and Deontay Murray is that some of the time Trey Young would do it, some of the time Deontay Murray would do it. It never felt like they were playing off of each other. And that's the biggest thing in terms of a backcourt. You need chemistry. You need to play off each other. Not so much let me go now and then it's your turn and then it's my turn. We've already seen that that type of play isn't always conducive to winning. You can't always stop the ball, let one person cook, stop the ball and let the other person cook. Ball movement is essential. Chemistry is essential. Cutting is essential. You need to do these things if you're going to win. So I think the backcourt of Deontay Murray and the Hawks could work, but they need to be more open to playing with each other versus going ISO at times and letting Trey Young cook and Deontay Murray cook. Because when they play together, I think they could be a better tandem than a lot of people are giving them credit for. So how did the Knicks factor into this? How could the Knicks swing a trade for Deontay Murray? Could they even do it? Well, actually, Bleacher Report's Eric Pincus answered that question too. According to Pincus, Evan Fournier, who is due for an $18.8 million salary and has a $19 million team option that can be waived next summer, is the perfect salary match along with a slice of the Knicks draft assets in a hypothetical trade that could help the Hawks avoid the second apron of the luxury tax in the new CBA and recoup some of the future picks that they gave up for Murray in the first place. So the Knicks, if they wanted to, and if they felt the need, could potentially get a Murray deal done with the Hawks. It would cost them Evan Fournier. I know I can hear you guys crying now. I'm sure you'll miss him. But the real part here is that it would cost the Knicks some draft assets. A slice, as Pincus wrote, of the Knicks pie of draft assets. Now, future assets don't only mean first round picks, which the Knicks do have. Future assets also mean young players. And I can tell you that if the Knicks were to swing for a trade for Deontay Murray, they would need a guard back. They would need somebody else in the backcourt that potentially could work better with Trey Young. And the only guard that I can think of on the Knicks that would be available and that a team would want would be Emmanuel Quickly. So I'm thinking that if the Knicks made a trade for Deontay Murray, and we made the money work with Evan Fournier, and we added maybe two first-round unprotected picks, and maybe a pick swap and a protected pick, and then you add Emmanuel quickly, 
maybe an Isaiah Hartenstein or another player with that, not as significant as quickly, but just another addition, I think the Knicks could argue that that package could start conversations to acquire Deontay Murray from the Hawks in a trade. But I don't know if the Knicks would essentially do that at this point in time. They've obviously added Jalen Brunson to their backcourt, one of the best free agent signings in the last decade for them, probably longer. And now with that signing, you have somebody that you can build with and they can add other pieces around Brunson and around some of the core pieces they have on the Knicks and try to make the team competitive. However, the assets that you might have to give up to get Murray might stop the Knicks from making that move. Is it a necessary move for the Knicks? Do the Knicks get better if they add Murray? Well, one of the biggest knocks against the Knicks was shot creation. They didn't have a lot of shot creators when they were in the playoffs besides Brunson, sometimes Randall, and then RJ Barrett, who unlocked himself and was doing extraordinary things on offense, driving to the basket, being aggressive. So we did see some of that from the Knicks, but not enough. Clear as day, we needed better shooting, we needed more shooters, and we needed somebody who could create their own shot. If you're looking for a guard that can defend very, very well, who steals the ball extremely well, and also can create their own shot, Deontay Murray checks those boxes. Check out his season averages. Deontay Murray averaged 20.5 points, 6.1 assists, and 5.3 rebounds in 74 games played this season. 74 games. Again, the best availability for your team is being out there on the court. And he was able to do that for his team this season. 20 points playing with Trey Young. And you know how many shots Trey Young's going to get up. Ice Trey comes alive because of the amount of times he shoots. Let's get that right. So if that's the case, averaging 20 points in a backcourt with Trey Young is actually pretty impressive, especially with the way that they play. They don't play a lot of the times together or off of each other. They play separately at times. So it's actually very interesting to note that he could score 20 points and get the averages that we just read playing with Trey Young. So if you're looking for somebody that can help get a shot, help create their own shot, help get others involved, and still keep the defensive tenacity that you need for a Tom Thibodeau team, Deontay Murray does check those boxes. If the Knicks are looking to upgrade in terms of getting a better guard that they can trust that is still in the trajectory in terms of where the Knicks are headed, Deontay Murray could be that addition. And if they think that Emmanuel quickly has hit his ceiling, then it makes a lot of sense for them to entertain a trade that would move quickly out of the Knicks and bring another guard that they believe in to the Knicks that they potentially could pair in the backcourt with Jalen Brunson that would make them more competitive. An addition of Murray might do that. My only fear and concern about that is how many draft picks would it take to acquire Murray for the Atlanta Hawks? Not to mention, the Hawks haven't even mentioned anything about making Murray available. But it's very interesting to note that under the new collective bargaining agreement, the Hawks are not able to do what they used to be able to do in terms of signing other players, going into the luxury tax, trying to get better in that regard. They can't play with that same type of house money as they were able to before. So it's making it a lot harder for them to retain the talent that they have and also try to get better by adding talent. So the Hawks have a lot of decisions to make, not only about Deontay Murray, but about John Collins as well too. They're going to have to make a lot of moves, shed a lot of salary in order to retain Murray. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks in Atlanta when it comes to Deontay Murray and John Collins. Who will be made available by the Atlanta Hawks? And will the Knicks come calling? I think the main thing and the main reason that the Knicks would call for Deontay Murray would be they know they need another shot creator, but the deal has to make sense. While Leon Rose has traded some first round draft picks away here and there, has made some bad paydays for some players, although albeit he didn't really know at times with certain players, I can say one thing about Leon Rose. He's a patient man. He will not race to make a superstar trade unless it makes sense for the New York Knicks. We've seen it with Donovan. We've seen it to an extent with Zach Levine during the trade deadline. He's not going to pull the trigger on a superstar trade that's going to hurt the Knicks and put them back. If the trade makes sense for the Knicks, if it's not a crazy amount of assets and it helps us get better, Leon will make that move. The only question is, what players will be on the board and will they be available 
because that's the question. And depending on if they are available, what are the assets needed for the Knicks to acquire them? I'm sure this is going to be a very interesting offseason, not only for the New York Knicks, but for a lot of teams around the league. And I can't wait to see where Murray ends up. Will he stay with Atlanta, go to the Knicks, or go to another team? Your guess is as good as mine. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment below, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans, peace.